Oh, the joys of plowing. Nothing like the fresh smell of dirt. Fields of grass and stubble turned into beautiful rows of black. Plowing was the key to the agricultural revolution some years ago, but now has stepped back and taken its place in history. Newer farming methods have taken the jobs of conventional plows, but the love of plowing still lives on in some farmers and avid collectors. This video was made with the intention to teach the principles of plowing and will help guide you through the plow and tractor setup process, as well as demonstrating proper ways of plowing in the field. This video was made to make life a little easier for anyone that may need some help in adjusting or setting up a plow. Watching this video will enable you to learn in a focused, visual setting where events are explained thoroughly. The beauty of the video is that you can always rewind if you miss something. The critical thing to know about our tractor in order to plow is the pulling force it's capable of producing. Well, what exactly is pulling force? Pulling force is simply how strong a tractor is when it comes to pulling an object. It should be noted that we need to take the pulling force at the correct speed we plan to plow at. Maximum pulling force is found in first gear. Plowing is typically done in second or third gear. Since not all pulling force results are easily accessible, we can use a different method and still get a good approximation. For this method, you multiply drawbar horsepower by 180 and by 2 divided by your plowing speed. Now that we know what our tractors are capable of, we can start looking for a plow. Next comes the fun task of finding a plow. But before we jump into the neighbor's fence row to pick one out, we should at least find out what size of plow we can pull. There are a few things we need to understand to figure out our plow size. First is the term drag force. Drag force is the force it takes to pull a plow at a given depth. It depends on how much soil you are lifting and how much you are moving. When looking at these processes a little closer, we can determine that some variables will affect drag force much more than others. The critical variables can be used in an equation to calculate drag force. As we begin, I want to introduce a method called the four L's of plowing setup. Following these four steps will make the plow setup process as simple and straightforward as it can be. This process also works for mounted plows, but in a little bit different order. We begin with the horizontal adjustments. In order to minimize the pulling force it takes to pull your plow and have the lowest amount of wear on your plowing surfaces, you must line the center of the plow's pull with the drawbar of your tractor. Moving on to the vertical adjustments, you can see we also have center line of draft and a point of resistance. This point of resistance is found by projecting the center of draft onto a bottom, then measuring up from that point one half of the cutting depth. The center line of draft again extends to the hitch of the tractor. To check our vertical line, we have to have our plow in the ground. Since there are many obstacles in the way to run a string, we create an offset. We measure up a known distance from each of our points, tie up the string, then measure down to our crossbar. This will guarantee that your plow will not nosedive into the ground too deep or not go into the ground at all. 
Vertical adjustments for mounted plows are a little more straightforward. Suction angle is the main thing to consider. The height of the plow beams from the ground surface should be the same from front to back, meaning the plow runs parallel to the ground. Any discrepancy is referred to as suction angle. This is usually adjusted by the upper mounting point, which would be the top link or lever arm of some sort, but may also be just as simple as setting your gauge wheel and your mounting arms to coincide or cut at the same depth. Each type of mounted plow has a little different setup to it, but the basic idea is to check the plowing depth behind each bottom. If they are all the same, no adjustment is needed. If they are different, a top link adjustment may be necessary. Before the age of no-till farming, the most important part of planting a crop was seed bed preparation. For hundreds of years, plowing was the primary tillage method. Many other secondary tillage methods followed to prepare the soil for planting. The main focus of seedbed preparation is to roll the old crop along with the weeds under the freshly turned soil. Burying the old plant matter cuts off at sunlight and allows the old plants to decompose and become mulch for the new crop to be planted. Performing this process also creates a more porous soil that will allow more water to be retained. The Nebraska test has given us a great deal of understanding to our tractor's capabilities, and all the pulling force equations can be compared with that. But there is no testing information available on plows that we could find. So with my machining and engineering background, I decided to change that. After testing, I machined out the other components of the force gauge and welded them together. We made another pass and observed how close to the mark we were. I took the footage and zoomed in a little closer to see that we are about 3 eighths of an inch away from our 1500 pound mark, giving us a drag force of right around 1400 pounds. We have found ourselves in some very unusual places, even getting a little dirty.